All right, so that's part A, part B, that's the setup. Now, let's have a look at part C because this is the real question that part A and B are just kind of laying the foundation for. It says, hence, prove by contradiction that any composite number of the form 4n minus one, so now we look at the other kinds of odd numbers, they must have at least one prime factor of the form 4n minus one. Hmm going on here. So what they're saying is, what we want to prove is that if you have a look at this 4n minus 1 uh, sequence of numbers, right? I need to go a little bit further actually because all of the 4n minus 1s that I've got are 3, 7, 11, they're all prime and what they're interested in here is the composite numbers that are in this 4n minus 1 format. So let's just go a little bit further. Um, you can see I can go, whoopsie daisy, I'm adding four each time, so the next one will be 15, and then 19, and then 23. Uh, you know, it just so happens that in this whole list, um, the only one that I'm interested in here is going to be 15. That's the only composite number that I've written down in this sequence. So if I just have a look at that 15 right there, um, does it have at least one prime factor of the form 4n minus 1? Well, you can quickly verify that that is true. 15 has two prime factors, namely 3 and 5 is one of those of that 4n minus 1 format and the answer is yes it is the 3 is in the 4n minus 1 format and, and you could keep going you know you can see 27 uh, that's 3 times 9 so 3 is I've already picked that one out um, and I could keep on going you know any any time I go along in this sequence um, this part C this result I'm trying to prove is that at least one of the factors will be at the 4n minus 1 format but they've also said, prove this by contradiction. So I need to try and go about this in an indirect way. Uh, this statement here, um, any composite number of the form 4n minus 1 must have at least one prime factor of the form 4n minus 1. Take a breath. If I want to prove this by contradiction, what I have to prove is that the negation of this implication, the negation of this statement, is false. I want to show that if, if I try and work with this negation, um, I just end up in a, as the name suggests, contradiction. I want to end up with something self-contradictory, something inconsistent. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to state this uh, implication in a clear form because I need it in a clear form so I can negate it. And then I'm going to assume that negation is true and see where it leads me. Okay, so let's have a go at this. How can I state this um, implication? Well, I like to have things in the form, uh, you know, P implies Q. That's uh, every, every implication um, is of this form. And the reason why I like this is because if this is what the implication looks like, if this is the implication, then the negation can be written as, rather than P implies Q, I can say it's P implies not Q. Right? So the order stays the same, the first part, the, um, the antecedent stays the same, uh, but the implication is the part that goes opposite. Um, sorry, not the implication, the, uh, the consequent, the, part, the second part of this implication. So uh, let's have a go, let's try our hand at writing it in the P implies Q or if P then Q kind of form. So you can see, if you have a look carefully, there are two halves to this implication, right? If you follow along with me, there's this part here, any composite number of the form 4n minus 1, and then it says must. So I could say that in this way, if you have some sort of composite number of this form, then, and then here comes the second part, the consequent, not the antecedent, then you can know uh, that at least one of, the prime one of the prime factors will be of the form 4n minus 1. If this first part here, then this second part here. So let's have a go at writing that. So the original implication is like so. Original implication. If k is a composite number, um, I've already been told that right from the outset, and I'm going to introduce, uh, you know, I'm going to say right at the very end that um, k, you know, it, it's got these particular qualities that I, I need to meet. If k is a composite number, a composite number, and it's not just any composite number, it's one of the form 4n minus 1. So I'm going to write of the form 4n minus 1. Here's the if. What's the then? What does it lead to? Well, it leads to the fact that at least one of the prime factors is of this form 4n minus 1. So how would I write that? I can say then 
at least one, right? At least one of the um, prime factors is of this form. So let's just write that. Then at least one, and I'm just highlighting that um, quantifier for me because it's going to be very important when I negate this statement. Then at least one factor is of that same form, 4n minus 1. 4n minus 1. Okay, now if that's what the implication looks like, you can see the, uh, you know, where's the p? It's here, there's p. And where's the q? The q, it's here. At least one factor is of the form 4n minus 1. I should put a full stop there. Um, I want p to stay put. So to write the negation, uh, let's write like so. Oh no, I'll put it in red just to highlight that this is different. Here's the negation. For starters, when you have a look, uh, the negation of this implication starts the same way. P implies something. So I'm just going to take this whole piece here. This is the if P component of it. So I'm just going to grab that. There we go. And now I need to say, then, what is the opposite of this orange statement? The opposite of having at least one factor is that I don't have any factors at all that are of this form, right? That's the only way that this doesn't happen. Like, at least one factor leaves room for the fact that there could be two or three or four or five. The only way that is the complete opposite of at least one is that there are none. If you want to think about this back in the language of uh, probability, this is the complementary event. Either at least one factor is in this form or none of the factors are in this form. So therefore, that's the way I'm going to say my negation. I'm going to say then it has no, um, I think I'm missing the word prime as well, because if I go back to the question, yeah, that's important, it says prime there. So let's just add that in. How am I going to do this? Let's shift that over so I'm not missing keywords. Prime, at least, that part's important. Okay, here we go. Back to the negation. Uh, instead of at least one prime factor, I'm going to say it has no prime factors of the form 4n minus 1. Okay, so there is the negation. This is what I'm going to try and work with. And because this is a proof by contradiction, um, what I'm hoping is that once I sort of fiddle with this negation, um, it's going to lead me to something that's contradictory. And then I can say the negation is false, original implication is true. That's the roadmap.